sports fans, welcome to Gonex Gaming and some Madden 17 coverage here of our franchise with the New York Giants and our competitive rebuild here. How you doing? We're going to take this team and we're going to see what we can do as we are now past week one into week two. We're going to go ahead and sim to the midseason here to see how things kind of pan out for this team. So we're 0-1 so far here. Let's see how the Giants do with what I've put together so far. So making just a few moves here and there, getting some key pieces in places that I felt were much needed and just trying to get this team to be competitive is kind of what we want and what we want to see. So coming out of this here, we can see that this team is 4-3 and three at the midway point and getting ready to play the Eagles who are 3-4. and four. Not bad at all. This is not was I, what I was expecting, but not bad at all. I will take it. Look at that. We are right there with the Cowboys at 4-3, and three, and this Giants team is doing quite well. So it's time to take a look around and see what's going on here as we can try to figure out what's stacking up well for the team and what is not. Maybe we make a couple of moves and get some other key pieces. Um, but actually, we have a bunch of players that are ready to negotiate their contract. So let's take a look and see what we want to keep as pieces. Uh, one of the key pieces here, I believe, is obviously our offensive line. We needs a lot of help. Justin Pugh, we want to keep him. He's an 84 overall, with, and he's only 26 years old. Somebody we could definitely work with and build on. We're going to drop the salary a little bit here and see what we can do. But he says the salary needs improvement. So we're going to have to work on that going forward. Jonathan Hankins, another one, 81 overall, 24 fantastic upside something we definitely want to keep so we will go ahead and re-sign him and he will accept our offer which is good we did drop it a little bit and then there's jason pierre paul uh 85 he's 27 he's on the better side of 30 uh maybe we put him into a long-term deal that we can kind of maybe trade him off later on or keep him for now but either way we definitely want to keep him on the team as he does does have upside and he does agree to the offer and does stay with the team so those are some big signings right there for us we have a few more that we have to go through. Larry Donnell, we definitely want to keep him as well because we saw some things that we really liked about him. And uh, he's 27 years old, 76 overall, but definitely some upside with him as well. And we do re-sign him and he agrees to our offer uh, on that one too. So this puts us into some pretty good places here. Uh, we have the halfback, young halfback, 24 years old. Again, good upside here. He's got some great numbers as far as speed go. But he wants a better salary as well. So we'll have to revisit that later on just to see kind of how he pans out going forward. Taking a look at the injury list here, though, we have a lot of injuries on the board. Uh, John Jerry, who's our starting right guard, he's a 73. I can't even imagine what's behind him. Uh, Breen is gone. Odell Beckham Jr. OBJ is on the disabled, as, as uh, hurt here, and he's got three weeks before he comes back. Uh, Rashad Jennings, so like all of our halfbacks are gone. Unbelievable, as this team is just riddled with injuries at this point. And I'm quite amazed that they're still at 4-3. and three. They have some kind of tenacity here. What I, I mean, I don't know what to call it, but this is amazing stuff uh, that they're still 4-3 and three on the winning side of, of the record with all those entries, especially some key, key players to the team. But now we're going to get ready to sim ahead again, and we're going to sim to the end of the season to see what the Giants can do. I didn't make any changes here. I kind of left thing everything as a status quo because it looked pretty good. So... Hopefully, this doesn't come back to kind of bite me, you know, in the rear uh, with this move here. But like I said, we want to be competitive. We want to be able to get into the playoffs, and we do. That's exactly what we do here. So we get into the wild card spot here. We're actually 10-6, and six, and we're going to be going against the uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, who are 9-7. and seven. And You can see we take our division. The Cowboys kind of fell apart, and the Redskins uh, are at 500. And the Cowboys didn't really fall apart. It's still a 500 team. But we're 10-6, and six and we take the division. We weren't expecting to do that. We were thinking um, coming in on the wild card there. Uh, we'll take a look at the standings there to see where we kind of stacked out. And we come in at a uh, ninth seed, 10-6, uh, and kind of tied out, off there with uh, the Lions and the Buccaneers. And, of course, the Panthers are leading things up at the top there. Uh, and you kind of expect that from them. Didn't expect to see the Buccaneers up here, but I guess they got a pretty decent team. So here we are, the Giants, 10-6, and six, looking pretty good. Uh, a lot more than what I expected. So let's actually go take a look and see the stats here to see what kind of worked out for us here. Eli Manning, nice year for Eli Manning. That 100 passer rating even, 4,300 yards and 28 touchdowns. Expecting more touchdowns out of him. 
but we did have OBJ out hurt. So, I mean, it's one of those things. Here he is, OBJ himself. 54 catches, not what we want to see, but he did almost have 1,000 yards. And uh, we'll take a deeper look into some of these stats here. The offense did pretty good. The defense came in second in yards. And uh, the scoring side of it was not the greatest. 14th in the NFL in points scored. And uh, like 13th in the NFL in points allowed. So decent numbers, kind of middle of the road there. And more than what we, again, what we expected. I thought that defense was going to fall apart on us. But if they're second in the NFL and giving up in the yards, giving up, that's not bad at all. So we see Eli Manning here, 4,300 yards, 28 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Not a bad ratio, uh, touchdown to interception. Would have liked to see more touchdown passes out of him, though. Uh, we take a look at the running back core. And uh, Shane Green's at the top of the list with 197 carries and 771 yards. Rashad Jennings did come back and did give us seven touchdowns. So you see he's kind of the key here to this team. But we got to be able to keep him healthy if he's going to kind of pan out for us. And then that young player that we offered a contract to didn't do much. Uh, but it's enough to keep it serviceable as he's kind of a third string anyway in this team. So Sterling Shepard, the young rookie here, actually gets the most catches on the team, 75, uh, picking up 763 yards, getting a little bit better in the yardage area, but not terrible. Larry Donnell, tight end, 59 catches, 541 yards. Yeah, you know what? I think I could do something with this guy. That's not bad for a tight end, 60 catches almost. And then Odell Beckham, and then we have Harris down there, as long and as well as Victor Cruz, in there too i think victor cruz was injured as well at some point in this if i'm not mistaken but as we go down the list we can see that the most touchdown passes were by harris who had seven touchdowns here and odell beckham right behind him with six um but we definitely wanted to see more touchdown receptions uh from this team as i thought the passing game was kind of their strength and they didn't think that the running was so big but uh kind of worked out anyway but Dwayne harris is the is the story here with seven, seven touchdowns uh, kind of like that. Coming on to the defensive side of this, Dave, Danny Trevathian. This is the guy who I traded for. I traded away a couple pieces and a pick. Uh, traded away that Eli Apple kid. And look at this, man. 132 tackles total. Six and a half sacks. Two interceptions. Two tackles for a loss. Looking pretty solid there. 109 solo tackles and assisted on 23 of them. This was definitely a bright spot in all the moves that we made. And uh, yeah, you know what? It was a good move. I mean, that's kind of what we're looking at. And I think this is guy was the anchor of the defense here going through. Let's take a little bit of a look deeper down into his stats and see uh, what else we have in numbers here. So even was pretty good in the passing game too. Eight deflections um, and uh, four forced fumbles and two fumble recoveries. That's pretty good there. We like seeing that out of this kid. And moving along here, we'll take a look at the rest of the list as we see Rodgers Camardi's up there and JPP. Olivier Vernon, Janoris Jenkins, Collins, Hankins, Hall, who is somebody we need to re-sign as well. I know that for sure. I saw his name on the list when I was going through it. But let's take a look at the sacks. Olivier Vernon here, six and a half, 16 and a half, seven by Bromley, six and a half by Tra Trevathian, JPP and Harrison each had six and a half as well, and then Hankins with five. Uh, pretty good in the sack department there. We were able to get to the quarterback. That shows a pretty strong front seven, if you ask me. So that's definitely something that we did not expect out of this team like we thought. Um, we knew the line was strong, but we thought that the rest of the pieces behind it were not. And picking up that middle linebacker was a big, big move on our part. And a smart one I can see right now. I mean, it's kind of panning out and looking like genius right now. So let's take a look at the tackles for a loss. We have 16 by Hankins. And then we have JPP and Harris, Harrison with 12 each. And then Olivier Vernon has eight. Not bad on that side of it as well as we're getting into the backfield and breaking down that offensive lines that we are facing out there. Four interceptions kind of tops it. Not many interceptions out there. Janos Jenkins kind of rules the roost here. But yeah, so we didn't expect much out of the secondary. And that's kind of what we get for that. And that's fine. This side of it, though, is what we got to work on. Eric Flowers, he's a young player, but he gave up 23 sacks and a new house gave up 14. That is numbers that we have got to turn around. That is way too many sacks. 37 times he got nailed. Anyway, let's go ahead into some sim action here. I'll kind of, kind of sim this game. It's the wild card playoff game against the Philadelphia Eagles here for the New York Giants. You can see our overalls in 81 to their 83. And that has a lot to do with some of the injuries that we have on this team. As we see the, the wild card round, Tampa Bay is going against Seattle on the other side of the uh, 
on the inside of the grid there for us. But let's kind of move on in here, folks, and we'll fly into the stadium. The Giants are at home. They're taking on their rival Philadelphia Eagles. And the Eagles are a pretty solid team, I would think. Uh, they've got some pretty good pieces in there. And we got to see how they're going to work out. But they do have one thing that the Giants do not have. Actually, this is kind of an advantage for the Giants. The Giants have Eli Manning. And they have Carson Wentz, who's a rookie. So going into the playoff game, my money's on the veteran who has two Super Bowl rings under his belt. And we're going to kind of see how this pans out as we go along. And we can see how they're moving the ball and moving it quite well here. Uh, and I guess, again, I'm going to say that this is Eli Manning's uh, veteran experience in the playoffs, more or less. It's kind of the way you got to look at it. As the Giants get on the board first with a 3 to nothing score, it was a field goal by Josh Brown. But that's not even the real story, folks. The real story is this here. Look at that final. 47 to nothing. Probably should have shown you more of the game, but it's really not about that. But this team completely demolished, blew out the Philadelphia Eagles. It wasn't even close. Watching it, it was kind of a laugher, to be honest with you. And I was not expecting that out of this team. I expected them to beat the Eagles, don't get me wrong. Again, veteran quarterback with Super Bowl rings going against a rookie quarterback. You can definitely see that that experience paid off. But the big thing here was the six turnovers by the Philadelphia Eagles. And again, that rookie quarterback, it was actually six interceptions. We'll get to see those stats a little bit later on, but you can see how the Giants did here offensively as they just kind of ruled it all the way across. So we're taking a look at the numbers here quickly. We see Eli Manning, 27 of 35, 284, two touchdowns. But Carson Wentz, that rookie, giving up six interceptions, and that just kind of set us up with great field position all game long to go in there, and we took advantage every single time and just kind of beat it down their throats. And that's kind of what you want to see. I mean, this team, like I said, has tenacity. Definitely has that grit about them that they're going to go out there and uh, give you a good fight every time, no matter what. And that's kind of what we're trying to build here. So there is an injury uh, on the board there going into our next game, which is probably not great, but we're going to take a look at that. And it happens to be Victor Cruz. That is a huge, huge loss for us as he's out for the remainder of the season, 18 weeks with a compound foot fracture. Not good at all. And we lose Damon Snacks Harrison there. As he's got a quad tear, he's out for one more week. He was actually injured going into the game as well. But we're going to see if there's any wide receivers out there to replace Victor Cruz, and there's not. There's nothing out there on the waiver wire, nothing out there in free agency that we're going to be able to work with, kind of plug in there to help us out. Nothing at all looks interesting as the overall best is a 64, and that's just not going to cut it. We're going to kind of just skip it and let it be and let it lie as it is. I mean, there's nothing we're going to do about it anyway. We'll do the best we can. But Danny Trevathian gets Defensive Player of the Year. But somehow, uh, yeah, Levante, Levante David got Linebacker of the Year, even though, you know, Trevathian got uh, Defensive Player of the Year. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. Anyway, going into the next game against the Lions, we're going to see the Sim here. We're going to do kind of the Sim the whole game. Super fast for you guys as we're going through. We see the Giants have the... Uh, 21 to 13 as Detroit takes the lead here. Giants pick it up, get uh, another three, and they're pulling in close there, closer. 28 22 coming into the fourth quarter, and that's going to do it right there. And the Giants drop this one. You see Eli Manning coming out there. Dude, you have nothing to be ashamed about, man. You did more than what I expected of you. And this team did more than what I expected. I expected eight wins. They got 10, and they blew it up in the first round of the playoffs. And in the second game here, they out a pretty tight game it was a close game 28 22 is your final score and no shame in it whatsoever as like i said it's a competitive rebuild and it's exactly what we did we competed we got to the playoffs we made it to the divisional round and we just kind of didn't quite make it past the detroit lions here as you see that it was pretty balanced all the way across rushing and passing wise and it was definitely a definitely a tight game i manning threw for almost 300 yards but there was four touchdowns for the Detroit Lions and uh, or Orlovsky, really? Four touchdown passes? I don't know about that. Green got 90 yards rushing. Shepard was the leader with catches, but Harris had the most yards, and uh, the passing game just didn't quite get it done, even though we had close to 300 yards. Couldn't break that end zone for the touchdown uh, in the passing game. But now we have a whole bunch of players to sign on here. Let's see what we can make of this. So Justin Pugh, we're back to this. He's an 86 overall now. 
He's got that confidence level up, which is giving him a plus two boost. We're going to go ahead and pay him a few more dollars. And we're going to make it interesting for him to want to stay because we kind of need him. And yes, we get him. It's an anchor on the line for us along with the center. We definitely need that guy. So here's Lewis Dumas. He did a good job for us this year. Played solidly. We're going to put, bring him back for two more years. He is on the older side. But it's a good piece to kind of leave in there. And he's going to stay with us as well. Here's Leon Hall. We're going to make him a little bit of an offer. We're going to kind of lowball it here to see if we can kind of slip it past. He was solid, but we kind of wanted more out of him as well. And he's on the other older side of uh, 32 there. So he's going to go to free agency, though. He does not want to sign with us. Keenan Robinson, again, another kind of like good piece. He would be a good uh, depth player for us. We're going to drop his salary, see if he'll accept that. And he does not, and he walks to free agency as well. You know what? Not too beaten up about it, folks. Here's Orleans uh, Darkwa. And let's see what we can offer him as we're going to drop us out a slightly young running back who has great upside and he does want to stay with the team. And that looks pretty good for us on that side. But I'm not really beat up about the pieces that did not want to sign with us and that decided to leave like you see here in the screen, Keenan Robinson. You know what? That's fine. You kind of weren't fitting our scheme anyway or what we're trying to do here. We're definitely going to have to go out and try to build this team up a little bit better. And one of the things we're going to look at is... Uh, our line and 35 years old Whitworth he's a 92 overall I don't know if he's the right piece if it's worth eight million almost nine million dollars to kind of get him in here at a 92 overall it's really really tempting but I think I'm going to kind of leave temptation aside there and we're going to move past the big score on the offensive line for for a guy like this I mean we also got to worry about him potentially getting injured and things like that uh, we're going to take a look at Reef though He's an 83 for the right tackle, and we need help on that right side sorely. We have absolutely no uh, linemen, offensive linemen on the right side right now on the roster as we let them all go and did not resign any of them. So Riley Reef here, we're going to make him an offer to see if we can't get him to stay with us here. We're going to kind of extend the, the years out to five instead of the four that he was asking for. Hopefully that'll be enough for us. Uh, he puts, him in at, puts us in at 10th. And we're a little bit behind there. The Detroit Lions as they're offering them $32 million uh, over five years. And a $9.9 .9 million bonus. Almost $10 million for him. But we'll see what happens with that. But we're going to go ahead and make another move here. And we're going to try to go all in here with, with offensive line. Right guard. Again, we don't have anybody on the roster in the right guard spot. So we're going to make an offer here for Vasquez. And we're going to offer him uh, about six six and a half million or so. And see if we can get him on the team. 81 overall, we'll take that. It was a huge upgrade. It would be a huge upgrade over what we had previously. So let's go ahead and sim through here and get ourselves into the next week and see what happens. And hopefully, we've signed some of these pieces here to the team. And we do get Vasquez. He does decide to sign with us, but Reef, we kind of knew we were a little bit behind there as we were in 10th place for that. Probably should have offered him a little bit more. I just didn't want to go that crazy for. An 83 overall, even though it would have been a huge, huge upgrade over what we had had. Um, I think like the move we made was probably more than enough. So we're going to go sign some other pieces here on that right tackle spot. We have Eric Winston here, 33 years old. He's a little bit older. It won't cost us as much money. We can kind of lowball him a little bit as nobody's really going to make him an offer. Hopefully he can stay healthy for us and kind of fill in that spot on the offensive line. Maybe we can find a piece in the draft. Maybe not. We'll have to see about that. So we do go make an offer for a couple of right tackles, and it's going to be uh, the second guy there. Soul is going to be more of like a depth player uh, more than anything else just to kind of keep, get some depth on the offensive line as that one piece is not obviously the greatest piece to have. We do need a backup quarterback. We don't have one at all. doesn't really matter much. We're going to go low ball here for TJ Yates as he has some decent numbers uh, and a good arm, and there'll be more than enough for one year to kind of Back up Eli Manning just in case you never know. We don't have any other quarterbacks on the roster. So kind of something you want to address before you go into the draft. You don't want to draft a rookie uh, to back up your your starting quarterback. It just doesn't usually work out well. So here's our signings. There's only a few of them. There's nothing really to write home about. I kind of got a little scared here as I was looking around and didn't really see anything. Didn't want to make any big, cute splashes. There really wasn't a lot to splash about anyway. But I think the moves that we made were kind of solid and sound. And they're going to fit us the way we needed to fit. So here we are in the first round of the draft. And we're going to go ahead and make our pick. And i got to tell you the truth, folks. When I got to number 25 here, after doing all of my 
uh, scouting with players. I was not prepared for this pick whatsoever. When I opened the board to see what was available, I looked at it and I saw the right tackle. I was like, do I go for that? Or do I try to upgrade my running back situation, which we know is kind of hurting and lacking at this point with the pieces that we have. So I went ahead and did exactly that. I picked up Sanchez Davis. And I hope it's a move that will actually work out for us. Going into our third pick here, we gave away our, we uh, traded away our second for the middle linebacker. Looking to see if we can get, if we get any offers here because I'm not really thrilled about what the board looks like anyway. The best one on there is a second rounder for next year. And uh, not what I want. Not what I'm looking for at this point. So we're going to go ahead and pick the best player on the board, which is Anton Griffith. is a short, uh, strong safety. And we're going to see what he can do for us. I don't think he's going to be good enough to start right away. But... He actually was uh, ranked 96, and we drafted him in 89. But I like some of his numbers here, and hopefully somebody we can develop into a good, strong safety down the road. He does work out to be a 71. So we can see here in the screen, we're into week six now as the draft is over, and I let them kind of sim the rest of it as I was nothing much there I wanted to kind of go through. And I didn't really want to struggle looking at fourth, fifth, and sixth rounders and seventh rounders. I uh, picked up some other pieces in there. Looks like we got a left tackle at, six, at a 68 overall. Not bad. Somebody in the fifth round. Something to look at or think about. And we even picked up a right outside linebacker of a 68 overall in the sixth round, too. So, And then another right guard to kind of complement what we have already at a 66 and finish off that offensive line. So let's take a look at our roster now. We have Odell Beckham. We have Victor Cruz. We have Shepard. Eli Manning is our quarterback. Shane Vereen is the starting running back right now. But we're going to probably make the move to put Sanchez Davis, our rookie, up there at the top. As like I said, definitely a question mark in the running game. Uh, I thought Rashad Jennings would be something to kind of work with, but with his injuries, that, that's not going to work out very well for us there. The offensive line looks a little bit better this year than it did last year as we picked up some of those pieces to kind of improve it a little bit. And looking at the defense, uh, looking pretty decent here on defense as well. Trevithian has upgraded a little bit as well as Kennard. Thomas on the, on the uh, right side doesn't look so impressive. But we have Delmas and Collins out there. You see Griffin is not going to be starting as he's a 71 as compared to the 78. Our corners look are the same in Janoris Jenkins and Rogers Cromartie. But Rogers Cromartie looks like he's upgraded a little bit. So that shouldn't be too, too bad. And obviously, the defensive line is as solid as ever. But that's going to do it for part two here, folks, in this one of the competitive rebuild. Please leave your comments below and leave a like for the video. Come on back for part three where we play out the second and third seasons of this competitive rebuild. I'll see you around the channel, and goodbye now.